One of the biggest advantages of the new Mavic 3 is its larger sensor. Its four thirds sensor is almost twice the area of uh, the one inch sensor found on the 2 Pro and the Air 2S. Remember you're talking about area, not just uh, linear size, which is why it, it is almost twice the size. Anyway, one of the advantages of that is that every pixel on the sensor is much larger and therefore should be better at capturing light, especially in low light. It's a moonlit evening tonight and uh, you can see my little pond all uh, lit up there so I thought I'd actually put Mavic 3 up into the air, see whether or not it can capture any uh, moonlight, moonlit fields around me and see how it copes with the ducks and the fish in this uh, lovely uh, dark evening. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's get it up in the air. Okay, on this moonlit night, let's take off. You see the auxiliary LED has come on there. Uh, the default setting is also, so when it's dark, it will automatically come on. And then if you go uh, high up in the sky, it'll turn itself off. Again, the default setting on the function button, double click, turns it off, double click, turns it on. have a little look at the pond for the moment. Uh, if you're wondering what the little dinosaurs are, um, since I put them up in the summertime, Mr. Heron has not been back. I think he doesn't like the beady eyes. So, um, so I'll have another quick look for some fish. Okay. So for now I'm just leaving it on automatic. So this will just be uh, the default settings for taking a photo. and uh, take another one for good luck. And uh, let's have a quick look, take it into pro mode, so that's the bottom right. So I can see my shutter speed's gone down to a quarter. Let's get the uh, Obviously, uh, Mavic 3 has got a variable aperture like the 2 Pro. So, of course, if I increase the number, that's going to be uh, decreasing the size of the aperture, and you can see the uh, picture getting correspondingly darker. On auto, it already pinged it up to 2.8, so that was cool. Let's try a one second shutter speed just for a laugh. Right, let's take it up into the sky, see what we can see. As you can see, I do live in the middle of nowhere. Um, one of the very interesting features I was looking for is um, the ability to lift the gimbal up beyond the horizontal. Now, when you're moving the gimbal wheel, you can see there is a line and that marks the 90 degree or zero degree depending on your point of reference. Now if I keep on going up will I make it to the moon? Oh look at that, that's handy isn't it? So I've gone above the, uh... right well I reckon we should put the um, zoom to the test now. First off let's just have a quick picture and I'll chuck it back into auto Take one there. Now of course the telecamera on here has got a much smaller sensor so you're not going to get the advantage of large pixels but you are going to get the advantage of the equivalent of a, a seven times optical zoom. So let's go into explorer mode and see what we can see. If I go in to four, so this is digital crop at the moment, still off the main camera. Now, fortunately, when you're in explorer mode, you lose all uh, manual control. So you've just got to rely on automatic settings. Uh, you can't even shoot in uh, RAW, it's only JPEG. But let's just get it right in the center. 
go one more time. So now we're on the seven time zoom. Mm. It's not looking very good, is it? Okay, if I tap the screen and tell it where to focus. Try taking a photo there. I'm thinking that's not going to be too good. This has come out of uh, zoom, so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's pretty smart, that isn't it? With the clouds there. Let's see if I can uh, take a nice picture of that. I'm out of explore mode, and now let's just try mucking about a bit. God, I it's very easy for people with fat fingers. Right. Let's have a quick look at the horizon. Now, if I put it in auto, I really am not going to be... Uh, that's going to be pretty hard to take a photo. Right, up bright and early on this very, very chilly morning for what is actually a beautiful moon set happening over there. And then obviously in an hour's time, I'll have the sun rise. So that should again put the uh, lovely big 4.30 sunset through its, uh, through its paces. Um, very, very chilly, but I'm hoping now with the moon uh, lower in the sky and a little bit of ambient twilight uh, in the sky, I might get a better picture of the moon and obviously capture the sun. So without further ado, let's take off. So the moment I drop into explorer mode to enable the zoom, I lose all of my manual camera settings. And the only thing I can actually affect is the uh, exposure value. Down the bottom I can play with that which will change the exposure but I can't change anything else. Aperture, ISO, exposure time. I'm stuck in auto mode which is a bit of a shame. But before we lose it to the cloud let's just take a few photos. So now we're on four times digital zoom on the main sensor. But with the moon, I'm going to take it down a notch. So I think that will give me a better photo that I can possibly play around with in post-production. Then let's jump into that seven times zoom. So now we're using the telephoto lens. I'm seeing it on the small screen isn't too bad. Let's jump up to 14, so we want to double Two times digital zoom on the telelens now. And hey, why not? We'll go up to 28. And on the screen, it's looking good. But I'm not sure how good that will be on the big screen. Right. Right, let's have a pan round and see what's happening. 360 degrees, not 180 degrees the other way. Okay, fairly nice sky forming there. Let's mess around with the white, white balance is always good fun in pro mode. So change that, take it off. Now remember white balance affects the sensitivity of the sensor to different colour of light, whether it's warm or cold. Normally the Kelvin value, the lower the K value, the warmer uh, the light, and obviously the higher the K value, the colder the light. So when you're adjusting the sensitivity, it's DJI, they have it the way they display it, it's switched round. So if you actually decrease the K value of the sensor, it's expecting the light to be warmer, so it makes the picture colder. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that very right, but uh, that's just the way it is with the uh, DJI uh, display. So if again, if I go now and I change the white balance from very low to very high, 
see there, jumps right up and it literally changes right up to 10,000k there. Makes that sky very, very red. Which is kind of what you want when you're uh, taking a sunrise photo. Right, gonna bring him back down and then come out again in half an hour, hour or so and uh, grab that sunrise. Right, back out at sunrise. Just throwing the drone up and uh, lucky enough to just be capturing the sunrise as it peaks above the clouds. Right, just using the full sensor. Here's the full standard sunrise shot. One nice thing I like on uh, Mavic 3, uh, very easily go quite up high with the gimbal. Uh, they've designed it so that you can actually go up to 35 degrees above the horizon, which is uh, quite impressive and there's no props showing at all. That is a significant uh, new feature Anyway, back to the case in point, taking photos of this sunrise. Let's capture a little bit of video. Nice colors. like it's capturing enough of the ground but really capturing the sky nicely as well. Play around with the white balance a little bit. There you go, bringing up a nice deep red sunrise there. Capturing the shadows of the long, the long shadows of the trees very nicely there. It's a bit of a sunspot, that's my only frustration there. I'm seeing a bit of a green, green sun flare, which is a little bit annoying might be that if you're uh, planning on taking sunrise or sunset shots you need to take off the glass, the, the, the clear glass protector. It's a four time digital zoom on the main sensor. Remember you lose all the manual settings, you have to go into auto, well you put into auto mode. Now let's try that seven times zoom which is the telecamera lens. I mean it looks great from here. When I get on the big screen, I will uh, be checking that out, but uh, goodness me, that does look big and beautiful. So this is literally about 15, 20 minutes after sunrise now, and look at these lovely long shadows spilling across the field. It's beautiful. Okay, wow, wasn't that lucky, because it's all got cloudy, but um, <laughs> I was up there at the right time when the sun was shining. The lack of manual controls in uh, Explorer mode, in Zoom mode, is a little bit frustrating. But um, as is, you know, as I said, the lack of other functions as well. But hopefully those are going to come in drips and drabs uh, with firmware updates over the next month or two. The bottom line though is the more I fly this, the happier I am. And still leaving the cost aside, um, it is proving to be an incredibly capable uh, model. and I'm incredibly pleased with it. Anyway, I want to do a little bit more testing with the zoom camera and uh, some of the other 
features of this so I will be putting out some more videos over the next uh, few days and the like as ever if you like what I do give me a little thumbs up always helps uh, something the don get notified when I put something out either way until next time have fun and happy flying <laughs>